Hi hey everyone. I think I've been kayaking on like the last whole bunch of my uh, vlogs. But I came out of here to relax and I don't know if you can tell from the <laughs> from the way things are bobbing, the waters are quite choppy out here. Which is just kind of how my mind has been. Um, I feel like I want to... I feel like I want to reorganize um, like timing of stuff now because I've had so many vlogs about the year out thing and it's hitting hard. It is hitting hard and, and it's making my my mind go to places that I didn't expect it to. And it's just sort of like apropos. I don't know if you can tell by the water. It is damn choppy out here. And I'm like, woo, which is like not good when you just had lunch <laughs> on the water. And I didn't even pull over to like dock because I just didn't feel like it. Um, so my timestamp is like, what, a year and a week, I think is where I am post mastectomy. And it's funny even doing these vlogs because I'm like, I don't want to talk about it anymore. And you get to 12 months and it's like, okay, something exciting is supposed to happen and it just doesn't. You know, there's no big party or whatever. Um, the, the, the thing I pull, I guess, from meeting with my, um, my oncology psychologist was that like I get to restart life you know <laughs> I get to if anyone knows me like personally you'll see why this is so humorous I get to restart life now you know it's been a year I'm fine who knows if I'm fine whatever like I just you know everything is supposed to be a-okay I'm on the schedule for the Lupron, I'm on my schedule for the Zameda, you know, even though I have a hundred thousand side effects, I'm doing just fine, which basically means that I'm here. And so now I get to, you know, reorganize my life. You know, what, what do I want to do for a job that's, I mean, I have a job, but like, you know, you can find a new job that's fulfilling and, and you can put the people in your life that you really, you know, want to be there because Lord knows I learned a lot about relationships during this whole drama shit fest. And I get to start all these things anew. And you know what? Like, I, I, I mentioned once in a while, but I've been divorced now for, what, eight years? I already started my life over again. I don't want to have to do it again. It's freaking ass exhausting. I mean, my... Everyone's like, this is Gen 2.0. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This is like Gen, like, 10.2.5.3. <laughs> and I'm tired of, of, I'm tired. <sighs> I'm tired of, of having to reboot and restart. I get that I get to, not that I have to. Um, so I'm just explaining where I am. I, I honestly think that. I'm going to morph these into, look at this, whoa, it's so choppy, into a podcast, because, you know, while my scenery is pretty and, you know, I don't put makeup on for all of you, sorry, not sorry, um, I, I don't know, I, I, I feel like I would reach more people, I feel like YouTube is like the 1980s of social media, and I need to switch over to doing podcasting, um, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Maybe that's part of the gen point, 10 point, 2 point, 5, whatever. Who the hell knows? But I've still been in an angry place. Um, it's funny because my <laughs> I got a drink today. It says, not a drink drink, it's like seltzer. It says, now lighter and brighter. Maybe I'm supposed to be lighter and brighter now that all this stuff has happened and like I'm fine. But I'm not lighter. Well, I'm certainly not lighter with the weight gain shit. And I'm not brighter. Um, so where I am now with this whole thing, I have been binge listening to uh, uh, survivorship podcasts. Um, I just, I think over the past two days, listened to all of, it's loud, to all of Jen Rosenbaum's. Um, and it's interesting because when I listen, she has other breast cancer survivors on. Oh my god, is it choppy? <laughs> I hope I don't throw up. Um, whatever. I feel like I should turn. Ugh. I mean, seriously, the way, I don't know if you can get an idea of how big my waves really are. 
but it's enough that like I don't want to get water in my boat and I don't want to vomit. Um, and my, my oar is like weird today too. It's, it's like the middle of it's like kind of crunchy. Uh, it's like there's like sand or something like it's oval, not round. And, and my paddle keeps turning and all these things are just going wrong. So, okay. What else is wrong? So listening to these podcasts and, and, um, you know, obviously they're breast cancer survivors. And I guess, it, you know, it's one thing that I'm ready to now listen to other people's stories is I guess I'm in their camp now and, you know, the Pink Ribbon Club. And it's interesting because I almost feel like I didn't have breast cancer bad enough when I hear their stories. Because a lot of um, the people just that happen to me in these podcasts, which means nothing at all, it's just like who happened to get picked, um, had like triple negative breast cancer or, you know, had where you you don't like know what's feeling your cancer. So of course that's scary. I think almost all of them have had chemo and or radiation. Some of them have had a shit ton of radiation treatments. And I feel like, well, I didn't have chemo and radiation. So that means I didn't have it as bad. So then if I didn't have it as bad, I should have a lot less things going on with me. Yet right now I'm wearing three pieces of very um, uh, what's the word? Um, not intimidating, but like effective, uh, kinesiology tape thing is going on. Two of them are on my scars and one is where my Achilles has been bothering me, which I can show you in a sec. Um, but there's still all this like shit going on. And I feel like if I didn't have cancer so bad, you know, wh why, why is all this shit going on? You know, why am I still so angry? And um, <sighs> I, I have a lot, a lot of anger. Not even about cancer. It's, it's not that. I don't have the, why me? I, I don't have it. I get that shit happens. Um, one thing I found interesting as I'm listening to these vlogs is that these, you know, as these women are explaining how they found out, almost all of them are like, well, how'd you find your lump? And how'd you find your lump? And I'm like, I never had a lump, so I didn't, I don't have a story of how I found my lump. So I feel like I don't belong to the club as much because I never had a lump. I had a tumor, I had more than one tumor, but never had a lump. And um, the other thing that bothers me, and it's not like a pity party thing, it's just like I'm very choosy, obviously, <laughs> after all, especially after all this, about who I spend my time with um, is that a lot of these women are like, um, yeah, you know, my, my husband or my partner found my tumor and thank God for them because they found my cancer while we were like fooling around or while I was giving him a hug or whatever. And like I'll whine for a little while here. Like I'm not with a partner and I have two sons that are older and those of you, not older, older, I mean like, you know, teenage, young twenties. And I mean, anyone with kids that age, I think male or female would get that like, you know, getting a hug every day just doesn't really happen. Like it would happen with like a two year old that you could just pick up and give a hug to and be like, Oh, you know, there's my lump. I didn't know. I didn't know. And what makes me angry now is I'm again listening to other people's stories is that I went to my gun well it wasn't my gynecologist I went to the gynecologist my gynecologist um it was right when COVID was like things were opening up again and you could make appointments and I didn't see my gynecologist I saw her I'm pretty sure she's a nurse she may be a doctor I don't know but not my regular gynecologist and I said to her, like, I haven't had a mammogram in like, what, two years now. And I'm, I'm like, can you just do a really thorough check just to make sure that all is good? And I'm not judging her, but she dug in there and felt around. I mean, she was very thorough and she didn't feel a damn thing. And it's like, it's like this invisible thing. How, how do you have like what was my tumor? I mean, depending on which report you read, it changes sizes. But I think for the most part, from what I read, it was like three point. Oh, look, I'm by a little island. <laughs> if you hear a boom, it's because I banged into it. Um, 
the main tour was 3.3 centimeters, I think. Um, that number probably changes in different vlogs because I don't have it like emblazoned to my head. And then I had calcifications that were like a half a centimeter around my, whoa, <laughs> oh my God. A half a centimeter around my nipple. Um, so like they classified it as uh, like a five centimeter tumor. Oh my God, I'm getting nauseous just from all the, whew, I gotta turn, hold on a second. See my one, see this is why I think I should start doing podcasting because then I don't have to worry about like angles. But I always give you these crazy ass views. Granted you see me with my drains. <laughs> this is awful. Ah! All right, there we go. I just want to turn into the water so I don't like semi vomit. Um, and I'm by the highway, so it's probably really loud, and I might even have to delete this whole thing when the whole thing is said and done. <sighs> anyway, um, I don't even remember what I was just saying, but uh, oh, the tumor, size of the tumor thing. Uh, yeah, I don't, God, that's loud. I don't understand still why I was um, stage one because I've heard or I've read that if you if your tumor is god that's loud sorry i'm gonna have to pedal away so away i've read that if your tumor is more than two centimeters that automatically makes your staging a stage two it's almost like some bizarro competition like like i had it you know well i mean you would have it worse if it's a higher stage obviously um, but being stage 1A makes me feel like, well, I just didn't have it as bad. And I guess that's true. I didn't have it as bad. You know, obviously there are people that are stage 4. These waves are like freaking <laughs> hardcore. I feel like when I come out here and I do this and I hit like big waves like this, it's like God's way of saying, shut the fuck up, stop complaining. And like, get on with your day and enjoy, <laughs> enjoy the nature that's flashing into me right now. Oh my lord! I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm paddling up Shit's Creek right now, because like, even as I'm talking, the waves are getting bigger. Do you hear them? Oh my god! <laughs> Thank God! Holy shit! I'm gonna, I'm gonna paddle over to shore. Maybe just vlog from there because this is kind of out of control. <laughs> it, it would be fun if I wanted to, like, I don't know. It's not fun right now. I need to freaking chill out. And oh my god, <laughs> it's not as exciting when you can't tell what the hell is going on and you probably can't hear a damn thing that I'm saying. And that's when I usually stop my vlogs and I'm like, why am I talking? Um, shut myself off and go someplace quieter where people can hear me and I'm <clears throat> wait take me 10 minutes to get over to shore so I can take 10 minutes anyway so the people that I've been like listening to these podcasts about have been um oh or like two three four five years sometimes more post uh diagnosis so uh, you know obviously it's much further out than than i am ah. and what i'm hearing is so many similarities in side effects um for people that mostly they're not on lupron um but are on tamoxifen and a lot of the weird side effects that I've been having that I've been blaming on, the, on like, whatever is, are really, I guess, from the tamoxifen, which I didn't really, um, I know I had the tendonitis, whatever, and, like, my hand gets tight, but what hit home was this one woman mentioned, you know, that she would wake up in the morning and she'd stretch, and just the ability to stretch your hand out flat was, like, a big deal because your tendons get so tight. I'm like, oh, here we go. Your tendons get so tight that like just stretching your, your hand out 
is like a big deal that you can do that. And they talk about like the fatigue and they talk about the weight gain. And a lot of these women actually too, most of them that I've heard are younger than I am. I'm gonna crash for a second, but at least I'll stop moving. Heads up, kaboom. Oof, there we go. All right, so let's hang here. That's 15 minutes or whatever. Anyway, yeah, look how like full of water my kayak is. It's definitely like, pretty. And now I get to hear the sounds of the water against the rocks. This is just how shit is right now. Like it's just, it's a lot. And I'm tired. I'm tired of all of it. Um, a new weird thing that's been happening is uh, nightmares. Since I started taking the gabapentin, why am I like smashing? Because there's waves, whatever. Since I started taking the gabapentin, um, I've been having these wicked nightmares. Um, they're not like just dreams. They're very vivid, like dark, scary, like people chasing you, trying to kill you, horrible things happening, nightmares every single night. And it's very bizarro that at like three o'clock a.m. almost every single day, it's not even three o'clock, it's like 3.15, I wake up. Um, there was about two weeks that I went where I was getting up at two and then I couldn't get back to sleep until like five or six. And then I'd go back to sleep for like an hour or something, wake up and then have to start my day. So it's like, you know, you take medication to stop one thing and then something else weirdo happens. I don't understand it. And then um, I went to PT on Friday and I said to her, um, which I mentioned in a vlog a while ago, I've been trying to do more cardio things. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. It, it probably looks like not much here. I don't know, but like the waves are moving pretty fast in the opposite direction that I need to go in. Um, yeah, anyway, um, I went to PT. This hitting the rocks thing is annoying the shit out of me. I, I'm just, I'm just so like, everything is freaking pissing me off. Um, that's why I have this hat. You see my hat, look on the bright side, you know, fake it till you make it. I'm not looking on the bright side of things. Um, so I went to PT on Friday and uh, my shoulder blade actually hasn't been that bad for the past week. Not sure why. I mean, I've been playing tennis more and even Wii tennis and I don't know my shoulder blade is not really hurting. It's like it's a crapshoot every time I go as to what area I need her to work on. But she did tape my foot. I don't know if you can see that there. I've got uh, kinesiology tape on the back of my foot. It starts in the bottom of my foot there and then goes up a little bit there. I'm gonna wear it for like three days and then take it off because you're not supposed to have it for more than three days, um, which should help with my Achilles. I don't know if it's helping. I wore flip-flops to go kayaking, which you're not supposed to wear. Um, and um, I ordered shoes. Oh God. I ordered shoes online. I, I went on Amazon and I looked for uh, plantar fasciitis, which has nothing to do with the cancer thing. I had that before. I've, I've injured my right foot several times. They're interesting stories. Um, I looked for plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendonitis, like shoes for women, and tried to find some that weren't like butt ass ugly. And I found one pair of like slip on thingies. Um, I'm like going backwards now. <laughs> I've been released release the Kraken. I don't know where I'm gonna go. I, I want to like stop moving. I want to stop moving. Oh yeah, this is not helping. I apologize for like the crazy brain. I can't even say I have chemo brain because I never had chemo that word is used a lot like when you forget what you're gonna say you know oh I got chemo brain I can't say that because I never had chemo I feel like the world does not want me to vlog right now because it's like turning me in freaking ass circles as you can tell from my backdrop you can't control your life sometimes because like here I am
What the hell? Am I supposed to like touch the rock and pull myself up here? Ugh! And not, and like, just hold on. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. I don't think I'm gonna go anywhere. <sighs> People keep telling me like, that they appreciate my, my rawness, raw, a rawdy, I don't know what word that would be. My being raw and real. Um, you know, I didn't have a talk show talk about like you know becoming who you want to be I did have a talk show and I it makes me like upset slash annoyed that I have three episodes that were partially filmed that have one hasn't been edited one the audio came out like crap and I need to like have the person in the studio to interview him I don't even know what the rules are for that with COVID and I feel like you would be the perfect person to have into like get me out of my funk because he, he runs a organization, a nonprofit organization called Kindness Cures, the Kindness Cures Project. Um, and I feel like right now, like I don't want to be hypocritical. I don't want to be crabby as a host on a show with someone who's trying to spread kindness when I'm like not feeling kind. I'm not lighter. I'm not lighter. I'm not brighter. I'm not light or bright. I'm annoyed and, and pissed off and feel like nothing is in my control and I'm just mad. I'm, I'm mad at my body for like just causing shit fucking issues every day. I'm mad at the world because of the stupid pandemic friggin' shit that like it's still not done and it's like you still have to think about it all the time. It's crazy because my doctor called about... Um, having a physical done and I just turned 50 um what uh like nine months ago or so um so there's you know a list of things that when you're 50 you're supposed to have done I'm supposed to have my shingles vaccine I'm supposed to get a colonoscopy I'm supposed to do whatever else I can't even recall there's some other vaccine pneumonia or maybe that's not maybe that's too young whatever there's a list of things that you need to have done and I know I need to go to my primary care um, so they called to set up an appointment today because I was due in August and it's August now. And she's like, we're booking at January. I'm like, January? You know, September, October, November, December, January. Five months. That's five months out. And like, I'm like, okay, I need a colonoscopy. Obviously, I'm not having one before probably January. And <laughs> what if there's something wrong with my colon? What if I have colon cancer and you're telling me I have to wait five months? And I'm sure the reason why I have to wait five months is because things are, you know, in air quotes, getting better from the pandemic. So no, everyone's going back to see doctors and to having all this shit done that they didn't have done before. And there's not enough staffing. Uh, she told me that three other doctors retired since the pandemic and they didn't hire anybody else. They are just, you know, basically taking patients and shipping them off to the other doctors that are around. So they're not even taking new patients right now. So... There's just so much shit still with the freaking ass pandemic. And like, I feel like the world is at such a divide. Well, I'm not, I feel it is at such a divide right now. Like when I was a kid, I could give a crap if someone was Democrat or Republican. Now it does make a difference in my life whether someone's a Democrat or Republican. Though I do like Charlie Baker and he's a Republican. But it's just that, um, I don't know. I feel like Trump changed a very large dynamic of what this country looks like and for the first time ever, I was like embarrassed to be an American, but that's a whole other story. <sighs> chemo brain, non-chemo brain. What do you call it? Cancer brain? Can't call it that. I don't have cancer anymore. I don't know. I don't know. I used to be really good at eye contact, though granted, like I wish I could. That's why I like the talk show things. I can look someone in the eye and not look at the screen dot that's right there, who I have to pretend is like all these people that are watching. Um, I like interviewing people one-on-one, -on -one, so maybe I will switch over to a podcast. I don't know. What I do know is that I need to keep sharing, even when I think I should stop, because, like, my vlogs just are hard to watch for a long time. I'm being self-deprecating, and I should stop doing that. Um, it's just that they're long, and my brain is just like... Brrr. 
uh, I swear to God, I don't have ADD or anything. It's just, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just how I am right now. And, um, it's funny because I feel like in general, I've been so short with people that are just making me angry and, and doing things that are disappointing or making me sad. And I'm like, why do I, like life is so short. You know, you find out about all this shit and life becomes really short, really short. And no one will get that except for someone who's had something traumatic like this happen. I think that's why I, I tend to get along with people that have had something big in their life happen. And by big, I mean big, like life-changing big. Ugh, my stomach is like, whoa, for this damn water. Ugh. I have a tummy ache. But a lot of people are just making me really angry. And I don't want to have drama in my life. I want positivity and support in my life. And in that way, I'm glad that I get to reboot and start over. It's hard. Because there's some people that you've known for a very long time, whether they're friends or family or whatever, that you feel like, you know, well, I've known this person for like 30 years, or maybe it's a family member or whatever. But I also know life is short. I am precious, precious. I love myself. And I know what I deserve. I know how I deserve to be treated. I don't have patience for games. I don't. I went back on Bumble. Oh my God. It's almost like, like playing like a game. Like, I, well, it's, it is like a game. I feel like it's like a game. I know there's some people that have got, you know, had great relationships from online dating stuff. Um, I met like one, I would say relatively decent person, or I guess two. I met two relatively decent people on, I gotta get off these rocks because I'm gonna throw up, from online dating stuff. Um, but they were only relatively decent for a couple of months and then they were shits and that was the end of that. Um, but you know, I, I, one thing I want to look for is, um, like some sort of podcast or vlog or something about people that are single and my age that are also cancer survivors because, um, I don't know, I, I, I get almost jealous. Well, I do. I get jealous when I hear that, um, you know, these women who are like, yeah, I'm so grateful that my, my husband would just like, you know, get me whatever I needed when I was healing. And, um, uh, you know, I didn't have to lift a finger and ha ha ha. He used to get upset. Like if I were to try to do laundry and he'd say, no, my dear, you stop doing laundry. I'll take care of that. I don't even think I had, I'm quite sure I did not have that when I was actually married, you know, and it's great that those people have that, but that is not how everyone's situation is at all. Not at all. Not at all. It is a whole different ball game to go through cancer as a single person. Oh my God, I'm going to freaking throw up at her, but I can't even talk. It is so choppy. Look at that. I don't know if you could tell. I don't know. Maybe you have a, a boat and like... <laughs> I just want to be out here for like a couple of hours and just like chill out. I'm even having a hard time like meditating and stuff. I just, I can't seem to shut my head off. Um, I don't know. And then you wonder like when I'm so angry and my stomach hurts, it's like, is there something wrong with me? Like, is there something more that's wrong with me other than just having a stomach ache? Because I had a chicken Caesar wrap, which I shouldn't have eaten. And I'm just like talking a lot and like, what am I talking about? It's important to vent. This is where I would pause and let my like guest have stuff to say. Cause I'm just like done. You know what I wanted to really do when I came out here was to cry. I wanted to come out here just so I could be in the middle of nowhere and just let it out and cry. But then that didn't happen. I don't know what the lesson is here, people. I don't know. I 
don't have like wise words of wisdom for you. I even like on my face, I've, I mean, I'm not wearing makeup. I just have some luck on, but like these spots on my face, like they could be freckles and I'm like, you know, who knows? They could be skin cancer too. I don't know. I flipped out when right before surgery, um, like it's been on my bucket list for way too long, which just seemed like a stupid bucket list thing to get to a dermatologist to check for skin cancer just because my skin is very fair. And I noticed that as I got older, I like, I have two things on my legs that look like freckles, but they look different than freckles. And I'm like, I don't know what those are. And then my primary care said, oh, that just happens when you get older. But my primary care also kind of was very dismissive about the whole cancer thing. So I take what she says with a large grain of salt and I'm looking into switching primary cares because no. Ugh. But I remember right before surgery, I got the name of a, of a um, dermatologist and I wanted to get in before surgery. To, like, so I would know like, okay, do I have skin cancer and breast cancer? I don't know, like, let me find out. And uh, I never went. And his name is sitting, and, and they told me like, you know, they, they couldn't get me in before my mastectomy. And they're like, just call, you know, when it's all over and you're ready, just call and, you know, we'll get you on the books. That was a year ago and I haven't called. And I think, well, because I'm waiting, am I just like, do I have something that's just is growing right now? I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird time in general too, because um, as, what, today's Saturday? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. For five days, I'll be an empty nester. And I don't want to wash my son's new sheets. I don't want to pack up his stuff. I don't want to do anything because I don't want him to go. I mean, I do want him to go and I don't want him to go. And obviously he needs to flee the coop and find his wings and do his thing. And I'm really going to miss him. Um, with the pandemic being as weird as it is, like we spent clearly a lot of quality time with each other because, you know, we were at home and through this process too. I don't want him to go. There's a lot of people I don't like and I like him. <laughs> and I don't want him to go. But I get it. I don't know. I just, <laughs> maybe that's, I mean, you're just talking about him was, which, like, was meant to start the, the waterworks. Because there's so many people that are just disappointing me and making me sad. And and then making it seem like it's, like there's something wrong with me because they're big shits. And I'm like, no, like there's not something wrong with me because you're an asshole. Like you're an asshole because you're an asshole. You know, take some responsibility for shit that you do that's just mean and nasty. And they don't. So I don't know if people can reflect and own up to shit that they do and, and, and words that they say that are just like dicky. I want to be away from the rocks. <coughs> Ugh. And one of the, oh, I want to be away from a rock. So what do I do? I, I push back from a rock and get stuck in another bunch of rocks. Um, one of the, I'm going to put you back in here so I can get out of here and then you might not be able to hear me because of the highway, but I got to, I don't want to, I can't in the top corner there. I don't want to be in this little rocky area anymore. And my arms are strong, so I should be happy that my arms are strong. This is like this is like 30 minutes of like bitching and random thoughts with Jen. Random thoughts with Jen. Maybe that maybe that should be the name of the podcast. That makes no sense whatsoever. Random thoughts with Jen. Um Yeah, I feel like people don't take accountability for, for their actions enough. You know, when I do shit wrong, like, I'll own up to it and, and have a conversation. And I want people to be straight with me. You know, if I upset someone, I'd want to know about it. And, like, let's figure it out and move on. And while, like, I am angry at a lot of people, 
like I stopped by a friend's to drop something off before I came out here and I was like oh yeah I like her like and not and it's not I mean yes she was help she was very very helpful for me after surgery and and helped me out in lots of ways and she's just an easy person to get along with um but it just made me remember that like oh yeah I like her you know she's nice she's she's like abnormally normal I guess the people that are like too normal I don't get along with those people. <laughs> We're like, nothing is wrong. My life is perfect. Bullshit, your life is perfect. You're just making it look like it's perfect. It's not perfect. No one has a life that's perfect. I'm just, you know, I don't even want to like figure out, love my camera skills. Woo! I don't even want to figure out what like my life, my perfect life should look like. Like it was recommended and then I make a list of like how landmark is, is this of making a list of like what's working in my life and what's not working in my life. I was trained in this and, and I, I changed lives because of the way that I would coach people. See how awesome I am? But I'm not in a space to like hyper analyze and take out like a sheet of paper and write down like what's working in my life and what's not working in my life. And I get that once I do that, I will feel a ton better and I'm still not doing it. Um, because I don't want to have to think about this crap anymore. Yet I do want to be able to vent about it. And I hear from word on the streets that these vlogs are helpful for people. And they find them funny. I know that I'm funny. I don't seem very funny right now. But I'm like sarcastic right now. And that's my way of being funny. Oh. I don't know what else to say. Like, I don't know. I, I, I literally have, I think, watched 15 podcasts back to back. Which is why I'm thinking that I should switch to podcasting. Because each of those podcasts was like 45 minutes to an hour. And I just have kept it going like on a loop. Um, yeah. I think it's just, they're just easier to listen to. YouTube just shuts off and stuff after a while. So it does not work as well as having a, uh, a podcast. So stay tuned. And we'll see. Or I might do nothing because I just don't feel like it. I don't know. I feel like I do things and I, I get that they have an impact. And I also feel like what's the point of anything right now? I don't know. And one last thing that makes me mad is people's expectations of me. So I'm not the same person that I was at all. Yes, I'm going to be trying 10.6.2.5. But I'm not the same person. I don't know who I am because I don't know my all my characteristics yet of the gen that I want to be other than, you know, my just reacting as the time comes as to whatever's going on. But what I do know is that I'm not the same person I was a year ago. I'm not the same person I was six months ago. Oh my God, is this rocky. Um, so when people are like, just expect me to drop life to come and kiss their asses, like that is not me anymore. I'm not a people pleaser anymore. If there's a person to please, it's me. I know that sounds super selfish, but you know what? For 50 years of my life, I really wasn't selfish at all, except maybe when I was a baby and just didn't know any better. Because that's what babies do. They're egotistical and they just want their needs met. You know what? And and maybe that's the getting back to like ground zero is, is that, you know, you start like you're a baby, you know, who do you want to be friends with? What do you want to do? What makes you happy? What makes you sad? What clothes do you want to wear? What do you want your hair to look like? All those things. I can't wait till it gets a little bit cooler out. And well, not because of this, because I'll miss kayaking when it gets that much colder out. But I want to color my hair dark again. I mean, my hair is like dark. You can see it's kind of reddish or whatever. But I have this blonde like highlights in the front and I don't feel like being anything that's light. I don't feel like being lighter and brighter. Yeah. So that's where I am. I don't know. I feel like I'm not saying anything. What else is new? I'm just here letting waves bounce me about and just being annoyed. 
And even like when I laugh and stuff, like I went out for dinner with a friend a few days ago and I, I was like physically laughing. Like I know that I was doing the act of laughter and I'm like, even though I know my face is smiling right now, I don't feel like laughter on the inside. Like, I don't feel like, oh, good, I'm laughing. Ha, ha, ha. That's funny. Didn't feel like that at all. Oh, my God, these waves. It is a very, very, very weird time right now. A very weird time. And you think, like, a year out, like, you know, things would be so much better because so much stuff has calmed down. But it's just different. And I guess... My one advice I would give for anyone else that's at this point is just, you know, you gotta allow yourself to just be with it. There's a mysterious seagull somewhere. You just gotta allow yourself to be with it and like, it is what it is. You know, don't try to be someone you're not. Don't try to fall back to exactly who you were before because you aren't who you were before. Ugh, I can't shut this stupid thing. You aren't who you were before. And you don't have to figure out who you're gonna be like the second you hit the friggin' 12 month mark. It was so loud because I got by the friggin' highway. Arrgh! That's how I feel right now. It's about everything. Alright, I'm gonna go. Maybe I'll just play some music. I don't know. That's all I got. I appreciate you guys like hanging in with my my with my thoughts that'll go everywhere. Oh look at the pretty rays of sunlight that's coming through my face with my little hat. Look 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 how bright. Oh I missed that. Where'd they go? Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Crazy time. And it's okay to just be. Because I don't know how I'm supposed to be right now. But I know there's nothing wrong with the way I'm being. It's just where I am. Alright, till next time, peoples. Bye.